Thanks. Okay, so thank you everybody um, for attending this session. Uh, I apologize, I'm a minute late, but this is the annual report webinar. So uh, we're just going to jump in and I'll tell you a little bit about myself and a little bit about why we're here. So if this works, does, okay, here we go. So uh, for those familiar faces, uh, I or and not so familiar faces. I'm Stephanie Thero. I'm the manager of technology services. Now, um, I was on leave from June 2020 to December 23. So if we haven't met, uh, nice to meet you. But I have about 13 years of experience working with the annual report. And unfortunately, Fortunately, fortunately, the PLSB made some major changes to the annual report in 2022. Uh, and so track had to make some major changes to the Polaris annual report and all of that. And so now I'm experiencing this iteration for the first time. So what better way to learn about it than to give a webinar on it? <laughs> now, the purpose of today is to give a general overview of the annual report and the resources that YRL has for you to help fill out um, some of the sections. So four key sections we're going to go through. And you'll know where to go for information, how to fill out those sections, and who to contact for guidance. So let's start there. Uh, the contacts that you want, if you have any questions, of course you can ask, ask them in the chat. Uh, I will do my best to kind of keep an eye on it. Um, but then I'll also, we'll have lots of time in the end. So you, but you can ask, you can ask any of your questions to askyrl at yrl.ab.ca. That will go to the group here at Yellowhead and we'll be able to answer your question in a timely fashion. Now, if you wanted to reach out to me directly for anything, my email is listed there as well. Um, so we're gonna just jump on in. Again, if you have any questions, feel free to put, put those in the chat. Now. So let's talk a little bit about the annual report. The annual report is an opportunity for you to report on the library, your library's activity during the calendar year, so the previous calendar year. Now these are collected um, by the Public Library Services branch and they go to produce the public library statistics for the province of Alberta. So if you're ever curious about uh, comparing or looking at uh, libraries of your size or libraries in your region, you are more than welcome to go onto the Alberta government website and search for those. And the most recent ones there are 2018, but it's all always a very interesting activity. It's, then you, it's also an opportunity for you to share your successes with PLSB. This is a great uh, instrument for uh, your advocacy, getting that, getting your message, you know, what your library has been doing uh, to share that with the province. And lastly, if those weren't enough altruistic reasons to fill out the annual report, it is a requirement um, in order for you to receive your operating grant funding. If you want to look that up in the library's regulations, that's under sections 11, 15, and I believe 20. So you have until February 28th, 2024. And of course, we are here to assist you if you need some guidance. Uh, but you are sitting here uh, live in this webinar and you have well over a month. So we're in good shape. So when you get started with your annual report, you'll want to gather up your information. And you can find the list of what you need uh, on the YRL intranet. I have the link there if you need it. Uh, if not, you if you don't have that bookmarked, there is, um, you can go to the link on the screen or you can also go to the YRL website and just search for intranet and get to it. When you're in the intranet, it's under the reports and statistics tab under annual report. And there you'll have links to the PLSB website and the statistics. The other thing you'll also need is your LibPass login username and password. Now you should have received those already or if you have them from previous years. Um, if you don't have that uh, and you don't have a it in a password manager or had been previously provided to you, you'll need to contact PLSB to have that reset. And that is all on the login page when you get into LibPass. Now, 
uh, this is what the annual report looks like on a section on page on the internet looks like. Um, and so that first link under PLSB documentation and logging into LibPass, that's where it will take you. For this um, webinar, I'm just kind of get the presentation part of the webinar. I'm just using screenshots um, just in case, you know, live demos never really typically go as planned, but we'll definitely jump into that at the end of this if you want to, um, if you want me to show you around a little bit more. So you have your, you have your link, you have your uh, statistics, which is in that second little paragraph there, annual report statistics provided by YRL. So you will need to print your annual report report from Polaris, and that's step one. Um, previously, we would have sent these to you at the beginning of January, but the beauty of the changes that were done last year is that you can print, do this, you can run it at any time in Polaris. The instructions are there and you don't have to do it at, on January 1st of the year. You can run it anytime and the results will be the same. Then you'll need your wireless statistics. So that's um, for your Wi-Fi sessions. Again, your link is there, instructions for the equipment, website statistics, and then a note about econ is there, but I will go on those um, one by one as we dive in. When you are in LibPass, the annual report section is divided up into multiple sections. So you'll be asked questions about the directory. So that's really just updating your contact information. And all of the previously recorded information will be there. So if you're unsure, it's there. And if there have been no changes, that makes your job even extra easier. So you have the directory, you have information about personnel, uh, staff and volunteers. There was one new change in 2020 for this year's um, annual report, and that is only affects if you have um, like count if you're kind of higher county libraries. So um, this is good for Kathy. I see that you're on the call. You'll have an extra question about um, staff administration, helping the boards at that level. Um, you know, whether you have a librarian. If you were just a, a standalone location, you do not need to worry about that. There's no change there. Um, then we go on to questions about collections, circulation, library access, um, services. And so that includes information services like reference transactions, examination services, meeting space bookings, um, information about the facility, so the size, the status, so are you moving or are you renovating, uh, and the ownership. Then programs, yeah, those are in-person programs, dig digital literacy programs, outreach programs, virtual programs, and take-home programs. So lots of information to record about programs. There's a library trend question, and then there's a spot for you to, where we say share your successes, list those accomplishments, and put any comments. Now, the areas that YRL uh, helps you in the most is those bolded purple words. So collections, circulation, library access, and Wi-Fi sessions. So those are the ones that I'm going to focus on today. But if you have any questions about anything else, more than happy to, to do that. And thank you for throwing in the link, Jessica, into the chat. So if you need to get to the internet, it's all right there. So jumping into the collections, what you see on the left is the screen capture from um, LibPass. And then on the right is the annual report report from Polaris um, about your library. Now, these are the annual report for anybody who's been around for a long time. This is definitely a lot shorter than before, um, but it all aligns fairly easily. So. Print items acquired, fairly, you have 194 on the report, you just put 194 on the on LibPass. And this is based on the material type of book, large print, paperback, and magazine. Non-print is everything else. Print items, withdrawn is just anything, again, book, large print, paperback, and magazines that has been change status um, to withdrawn in your library during that year. And likewise, the non-print 
is the same thing. Those totals get automatically added up so you don't have to worry about the math. Moving down the section, you have the total items. So total print items, and this says, and the, the um, descriptions are all here. So there is a reference key um, on the PLSB website, but it, you don't really need to look at that. That is optional. The only extra information you would have on the reference key is whether the question is new or, um, and what year it was added or updated. So when it comes to uh, the descriptions, everything is very clear there. If you do not catalog certain items, obviously the Polaris report is not going to be able to capture that. So if you have periodicals that you um, kind of loan out, but you don't catalog, those won't be in here. So you kind of need to manually add, add those into this total. But those are so that's anything at the end of the year that was not missing, lost, withdrawn, or had a claim, claimed, returned, or claimed in. Uh, that is the definition of the total total print, and then for total non-print as well. Now at the bottom, uh, the electronic equipment for loan. Because of the nature of how electronic equipment is cataloged by libraries and track, uh, it is impossible at this time to get figures for the annual report report for that Polaris report. Um, we are working on it. There are changes being made, um, but it, it's not quite ready for this year to help. Um, so for now, if you have a small amount or you have ones that are not cataloged in Polaris, you can just manually count those and enter the numbers in. So for this library, it's probably pretty easy for them to know that they have one library, one wireless hotspot that they lend out. Now, if you do catalog the items in Polaris, we do have instructions on the internet about how to get that information um, out of Polaris uh, if you want to do that on your own. Or, of course, you can reach out to YRL for assistance using our YRL, Ask YRL email. Now, as we move along, um, the next section is e-content. So this one is pretty easy in that you can just leave it blank. Um, because of the nature of the e-resources, because of sometimes it's easier to get statistics than others depending on the different resource, the yellowhead just reports on that in our annual report because the systems have to give um, an annual report as well. And it has a little bit more information and we do record e-resources, all the virtual circulation um, because this used to be just be virtual circulation. Now it's broken up into e-books and e-audiobooks um, and all other e-content. So that makes it just a little bit more complicated. Again, something that we're working on and we'll hopefully have, be able to provide for you um, for the next annual report cycle. Um, but for now, you can just leave that. Uh, as you can see, this is from last year as well. And this library just put not applicable. If you want, you can leave uh, a note about that, just saying that the system will report it. Uh, and I'll show you how to do a note in just a second here. Now, when it comes to total collections, this math is done for you, so you don't need to worry about it. And then here is where, um, if you want some, so a, a question we often get is, well, how many eBooks do I have or how many audio books? And just in the nature of licensing, it's a little bit tricky to report those numbers but you can report the contributions. So if your library gave, say, $5,000 to Yellowhead to put towards you know, the OverDrive collection or cloud library, this is where you would put $5,000 or however much. If you uh, contributed money and you've forgotten how much, uh, you can ask, ask YRL and we'll get that figure for you. Um, or if you have not contributed, um, any dollars, which is again fine. Uh, lots of lots of different variations on the answer here. You just put not applicable, and that is and move along. So that is the collection section. 
the next section here is about circulation. So the circulation also, again, aligns with the information on the annual report report. And so what is this counting in terms of um, total print, total non-print, et cetera? It is counting checkouts only. So it's not counting renewals. Uh, for the total print, it's based on, again, the material type of book, large print, paperback, and magazine, non-print, everything else. Um, now, and that's all between January 1st and December 31st. So when you're looking at your annual report, when it comes to the total electronic equipment, we're going to, I believe we get to that in the next, oh, maybe I'm supposed to talk about that now. Um, when it comes to the total electronic equipment, you follow the instructions on how to, uh, gather those figures from, um, the instructions that are on the intranet. Um, the circulation, I believe, is in that as well. Now, if I had mentioned about the notes, so let's just quickly talk about the interlibrary loan. So interlibrary loan, again, is on the Polaris Annual Report report. And if you, it'll have the numbers for within Alberta, which is including track and outside, it's pretty accurate for the within track. Um, the collections and resource sharing department is working on improving the statistics and the numbers so that um, outside of track within Alberta, numbers are going to be even better for you next year. Um, but for now, just put what's in the report. And outside of Alberta, uh, a little bit also trickier um, for on the ILL. Lent side. And so the instruction here is to just put, you know, whatever is it there on the report. If you feel like it's not accurate, if you feel like, oh, I said, I feel like I sent more outside of Alberta, those numbers are really small. But um, if you want, you can just click on this little note icon. And there is a note icon pretty much beside every single field. So if you wanted to write a note to the PLSP about anything, um, you can just click on that note. And then the inform it'll be okay. Just put it in there. Uh, a little explanation or or something. If something is, um, if you feel like oh my my uh, number last year was higher or lower than it is this year, and you want to explain that for anything within the uh, report, you can feel free to add a little note here. And that and that number of the ILL lent outside of Alberta is reported by Yellowhead on our system annual report. So you have you have that there for you. Moving along, we have the in library use. So that's in-house use. Um, there are two ways of reporting this calculation. Again, as the instructions say on the annual report, doing an actual count or doing a typical week estimate. So uh, that week estimate you would have had, you know, you would have taken a week throughout the year where you would have gathered up the items and kind of tallied them up. Now, if you're wondering, well, maybe do I do an actual count? I don't know if I do an actual count or not. Does this work form look familiar? <laughs> this is the check-in work form selected on the in-house mode. So if there is a procedure at your library where things that are left out and about uh, are gathered, taken to the desk to be scanned in on the in-house mode, then you will have these stats. If you don't do that, um, then, then you'll be relying on the estimate count. Um, the the in-house check-in, there is a, you can gather those with simply reports and um I've noticed that the instructions aren't on the internet, but we'll, we'll make sure that those get up there for the libraries who do do the in-house um, check-ins. And if you're wondering, I've never seen this work form, uh, I, I'm only familiar with the regular check-in, it's this little button on the side. It's a little house and it's check-in house. So you can see the little, there's a, it's hard to see actually, but there's a little check mark on top of a house. So that's the in-house mode if you want to do that going forward. That is a, a neat little activity, but some if your in-house use is low, then you don't really need to. 
Now, moving along, we have the card holders. Now, card holders is an interesting one. Um, and it's a seemingly simple equa uh, calcul code, but it's actually incredibly complicated. So without going into too much crazy rabbit hole and detail, we're going to just keep it simple. So the total active card holders, the province is looking for not just the number of cards you have given to people. You, they want it more of an indication of how your library is, of, of, of the use of the library. Now, the act, so we, there are three figures in your annual report, report from Polaris, uh, and I'll just I'll do a little explanation. So the active patrons, that is the number you can use. As you can see, this library, um, put 184, this is all the patrons who have uh, actively, so they've done a checkout, um, They've checked out uh, physical material by coming into the library, or they've checked out, say, an overdrive um, book through track pack, so through the pack. Um, now, this is, you know, for some transactions, if you have a library card and you only, say, use e-resources through Libby um, or Hoopla, um, or you're just using the library, you know, you have a card, but you're not checking anything out, you're just kind of going, you're maybe reading a magazine while you wait for your child and then you leave, that activity isn't really being um, captured in this. But as defined by um, the annual report and what the PLSB wants, that is what you're looking for. So there is a little bit of wiggle room depending on how you want to report it. There's inactive patrons. So those are people who expired during the year, but they didn't check out any items. So that that may capture those people who were only using e-resources or only kind of in-house use of, of materials. Um, so you can add those two numbers together if you so choose. Uh, if you don't, you can just use active. And then the expired patrons are um, the patrons who expired prior to the start of the year. And that's just you know, whether or not they checked out items or not. So you could add all three if you wanted, um, leave it at active. We're, it's just giving you the information and and how you use it is up to you. Um, consistency is probably, probably key. Mm. Then I have, is it normal for the number of expired patrons to be a lot more than the number of active patrons? Um, there's no real normal in this. <laughs> uh, I mean, is it possible? Absolutely. If you had um, a number of people expire within the, you know, prior to the end of the year. Um, if you, it's, it's a tricky one. It is really a, a complex way of looking at things. So it is entirely, it's possible. I don't want to say one way or the other, whether or something is normal. If you did have, want us to kind of dive deeper into, into the patron numbers, you're more than welcome to uh, reach out to Ask YRL and we can, we can help that look at that. So moving along, uh, we have our website visits. So your in-person visits, that is um, you, you, uh, you would have that, whether it's gate counts or, uh, you know, some sort of counter that you have or the typical week estimate, again, similar to in-house use where the week during your tallying people coming in and out of the library. Now, with the website visits, we are able to assist with that. Now, um, last year, everybody got new websites. So that was really exciting. Um However, it kind of changes the way records are kept, especially when combined with Google Analytics, uh, changing the way they they do things. So they improved their analytics, but um, with everything combined, the website visits is a little bit more, it's not more complicated, it's just a little bit of math. So on the internet, you have the link to the website statistics. Now there is the caveat. So at the top of this screen capture, this is where you'll be led to. And at the top, there is that explanation. Please disregard any stats 
for March and April within this sheet. So there's not going to be anything for January, February um, because your websites were on the old platform. Um, and then the transition was happening in March or in April. So don't put anything in there. Count the May through December and you're looking at sessions here. So that is what you want to be reporting is the sessions. So you may notice uh, in your website statistics, uh, and you can see it quite clearly here uh, on the views. So September, August, and November. Wow, like what happened that there were so many <laughs> views and so many active users and um, I've been told that there was a good amount of spam hitting some of the library websites. So if you notice a few months where your um, views and active users are crazy, um, that is why, but your sessions should kind of fall in line. So as you can see, the, um, the November um, statistics here, 14,000 views, but 58 sessions. And that's kind of in line with what December, October, September looks at. That's what you're, you're going to be reporting anyway. So is, is view, um, sorry, sessions. So that means someone coming, visiting your website, as opposed to which page, counting the number of pages that they visit. Um, so now you're probably wondering, okay, well, what about January to April? Where do we do? Well, there is the link there uh, on this page. And so that's what you want to use. You want to click on the link and it's going to take you to the Google Docs uh, spreadsheet, sorry, the Google spreadsheet. Uh, you find your library code at the bottom uh, of the tabs and then it'll take you here and you just report on your sessions. So here it, the math to, for the total for all results, it, it adds them up right there. So 209. So we'd be adding the two numbers together. So a little bit more complicated this year, but next year will be fine. Next year will just be one place. Now, next are the public workstations and Wi-Fi. So you'll have a good sense of how many public workstations you'll, you have uh, um, in terms of sessions. So again, um, if you have these, uh, have a software on there that will count to give um, usage statistics, um, you can use that number. Uh, or again, using that kind of estimate uh, during the week and popping that number in there. Um, again, this is another thing that we're looking to be able to improve our statistics reporting for you for the next go round um, as we, you know, look to help with public uh, workstation management. But for this year, uh, you'll have to, to gather that number on your own. But the Wi-Fi sessions we can certainly give you. And that link, again, is on the uh, intranet to the virtual st to the monthly statistics really so this is just a screen capture of that spreadsheet uh, when you get to it you change you choose the library from the drop down field and all of your monthly statistics will come up uh, a lot of those are just kind of for your own uh, reporting to your board throughout the year uh, but the wi-fi ones you're looking at total public wi-fi sessions that number on the top line in bold, uh, so 1,110, uh, that is the number you're reporting. So as you can see, this library, the there is a huge difference from what they reported last year versus this year. Now, what is the reason? Was the, you can write that as a note, is the library, was the library closed? Did you report the wrong uh, number by accident? You can put, and you know, just write a little explanation if you so choose. Um, or you can leave it, you don't have to, but a little note to explain kind of a um, kind of big difference like that is, is helpful. Now we're coming upon the end here. So happily, there were no major changes for this report this year. Um, the PLSB does have a library trend question that changes each year. And this year, the question is, does your library have a current technology plan? A current technology a technology plan um, 
being defined as something that outlines the library board's goals and strategies for utilizing technology to achieve its overall missions, goals, and objectives. It also addresses, addresses the current inventory of technology equipment and software in the library, as well as a plan for future purchases, replacement, maintenance of equipment, and stored, uh, software. Again, this is all in the description in LibPass. And the choices are yes, no, uh, we are in the process of creating or updating one, or unsure. And there is no consequences to this. It's just kind of an information gathering for the province. Uh, it also helps kind of feed into their symposiums and services that they offer, information that they give. So just answer honestly. You're not going to get in trouble if the if the answer is no. Uh, how are the workstation sessions different from Wi-Fi sessions, uh, Paula? Great question. So the workstation sessions, those are just at the computers on the desk. So they, it, unless those are uh, connected to Wi-Fi, um, which would be a bit different, they'd probably, I don't know, that would be a good question. But anyway, usually they're on the, yes, and Jessica, thank you. They're the log into the physical workstations. So those are usually um, on ethernet. So that is that is that. The Wi-Fi is anyone connecting to the library wireless network. So that's someone kind of coming in and using the Wi-Fi on their phone, or you know, if they're on their laptop and connecting to the Wi-Fi, that's what they're getting. So that's why you, if your staff are, um, using the Wi-Fi, they want to be connecting to the to the staff ones, um, just as a, a little aside. So I hope that answers your question. Um, speaking of questions, we've had some good ones, and uh, we're now here to to open the floor for more. So I think um, Jessica, are we able to like? allow everybody to talk all at once easily or <laughs> if people want to talk or if they um yeah this okay. I, I think that we can okay um, I'm just opening up my list of participants here uh maybe what we'll do is I'll just hit allow to talk on every single one um okay. and then folks can put their hand up and ask questions and I have a question of the group actually would anyone like to see, uh, especially if you're brand new to running reports in Polaris, see Steph kind of demo where you actually go in Polaris to find the report? Sure. <laughs> All right, that's okay. So what I'm gonna do is I have stopped sharing my screen. Um, I don't know, Jessica, if you wanted to uh, stop the recording, we can kind of just um, go. And do uh, the demo. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Let's do that. And, and I see that Mary Lynn's hand was up. Mary Lynn, was that your? Um... Yes, indeed it was. And when you walked me through it, it was so much okay. uh, better if you're doing it rather than watching you and, and listening to where to go and what to click and et cetera. Okay. Uh, and, and Steph, I'm actually not going to stop the recording. I'll edit out anything that maybe doesn't need to be in the final one, but some of these questions are really good. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay, perfect. Um, now I'm going to go back to sharing the screen. Let's see. We're going to just share screen two. Okay. So you should just see a Polaris toolbar now? All right. Or maybe I have to do that. Is that uh that looks great on my okay. yeah. Okay, so if you want to um run your Polaris report, uh it is quite uh it's it's in a good spot. So from your Polaris toolbar, you go to utilities and reports and notices. So that is where you are going to be running any and all of your um information so it's uh here we go so this is the navigation that comes up you want to go to custom so it doesn't really matter where you 
which folder you are, but custom is the one you want. Why is it custom? Because um, Track built it to suit our needs. So you kind of have to scroll past all of these folders, but it is the uh, first one here. So annual report updated January uh, 2023. So all I did was double click on that. I'm going to select 2023 because that's what I'm looking for. Let's see, uh, I was going to use Alder Flats and I go submit. Oh, because <laughs> you know why? If you have the if you have the PDF of a report, so say you run the report and you and you go to run it again, it's not going to let you because you have it open. So I'm going to close that. <laughs> there we go. Okay. Submit. And this is nice because it runs really fast. Previous um, previous versions had so much data that they, they had to gather that, uh, that it took a long time and it was really stressful on the system. So things would, would slow down. Oh, it's asking me about my password manager. So, and here's, here, here's the information and, and we hopefully the explanations um, here go, you know, are, are good enough for you uh, in terms of aligning, but the, the titles align exactly to it. So that is how you, you run that one. Were, were there any other reports that you wanted uh, walked through? Uh, Steph, there was a really good question that came in on the chat, and I have okay. a screen open. I can I can answer that for okay. Mary Lynn. So yeah. the question in the chat was, you know, I'm going to start my video as long as you all promise not to laugh at my unbrushed hair. <laughs> uh, there was a question in the uh, chat here about why am I gathering volunteer hours and where do I record them? So I'm going to share a screen with you here. That's a great question. And, um, you know, uh, what Steph is sharing with you all today are the uh, how to find those tricky circulation type statistics in Polaris. But that annual report actually asks for so much more data about your library. So I'm going to um, share my screen here. And this is going to stop your screen sharing, Steph. Um, and what I'm opening up here is a PDF um, that's, it's called a reference key to the annual report. I'm hoping you can all see that now. Does that look okay from your end, Steph? Do you see a reference key? Yes, okay. Um, this is a really great doc and maybe we'll just throw it in the chat there. Um, this gives you sort of step-by-step -step instructions on all of the little, pieces that you have to add into the annual report. So Steph, of course, is covering the stuff that, that we can pull from players from you, but there's other stuff such as volunteer hours. And so you are gathering your volunteer hours and there'll be a spot on the annual report where you put that number to report to PLSB how many volunteers uh, hours you've had over, over the year. If for some reason you haven't gathered that statistic, um, they give you some instructions on how to estimate your count of uh, volunteers. So Mary Lane, did that answer your question? Yeah. Uh, yes, indeed. And I see it now on the second page. Okay, perfect. I'll just go back to sharing my screen and thank you, Jessica, for doing that. So uh, let's see, here we go. Um, you should see uh, LibPass now. So this is uh, <clears throat> that section there. So that the reference key did have a little tiny bit more detail about the counts on, on, on the hours collected. So this is, uh, again, this is what you, what I'm looking at at Alder Flats is here. So this is the, annual report in a, as you can see, everything that you have to fill out. The reference key is helpful if there isn't a lot of detail, it, it may provide some extra detail for you. It is lengthy, but, uh, but totally within your capacity. And again, if you need help, we are more than happy 
to to work with you to figure out what these mean for you. <laughs> and again, uh, when you're done, uh, you know, and you don't have to do it all in one shot. I should mention that uh, as you're um, writing it uh, and filling things out, you can just hit save at the top or the bottom. There is a save button and you can continue your pro um, progress. So save here. Um, and if you, pr you can print it out as well. If you want, the print and save copy is up on the top, top right. You can uh, print a copy there if you want to work on it before, if you didn't want to fill it in live. So there is that. Um, and I'll just sneak over to the intranet just to show again where you're where you're looking at the instructions for printing your annual report step by step uh, are that first one and then getting the instructions for that equip electronic equipment for loan um, those statistics that's that's referring right there did we have any oh here we go got some more questions so this is great Staff numbers, is that the number of people employed during the year or the number of staff normally working? That's a great question. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to, as, as we're contemplating that, if someone else <laughs> has the answer real quick, mm -hmm. pop it in, but I'm going to go back to that PDF um, with instructions um, before I just make a, an incorrect assumption. Sure. <clears throat> So the staff, as I see it, you know, the instructions here say report total number of employees and total hours worked in the reporting year. So um, it's tricky if they uh, were on the count the number, if do not count the number of positions, count the number of total. Um, this is a good question. If are, are you saying like if a person was on perhaps on leave, they would be employed, but they're not working. After... Oh, oh uh, sorry. Um, did someone want to say anything? Uh, yes. Where's my thing? Hmm. Okay. Generally we have uh, two employees, mm -hmm. but, but last year one left and then another one was hired. So there was three people who worked in the library, but there's only two employed at a time. Gotcha. Uh, I would probably include, you know, count all of them. Okay. And, and put the hours. So, you know, obviously one was only working for half a, you know, for not, not, not the full time. Um, so you could calculate their hours that they were when they were there. And if you want, I, this was something that I would put like a clarifying note. So you would just you okay. know, add a little note and just explain. You know, it doesn't have to be a long explanation, but just explaining that if you wanted to. Okay. Yeah. And then to answer your question, your second question, after this report is completed, where am I sending it? Well, that's just the beauty of it. Um, you just click the submit to PLSB. So you'll want to make sure that your board approves it. Um, and then this basically saves everything, locks it from allowing you to to edit it again and it submits it automatically to PLSB so they get it so you don't have to print anything off or mail it or anything it's just that one button and off it goes okay I understand that it needs to be uh, approved by the board mm -hmm. but then uh, for me I need to send a copy to the county okay oh. do mm -hmm. I send a, a copy to you uh, if you want, we don't require it, but we love receiving it for sure. Definitely. You can send that to uh, email a copy, even just to ask YRL, and we can have that for our records. That would certainly be helpful. And that is where the print and save a copy comes in. So you can get a copy of that report. Perfect. Yeah. To download or, or to print. Yes. Um, so Jill has a question in regards to the previous question about the three types of card holders. I also have a fair number of inactive and expired patrons. Is there a best practice as to which number we should use? Uh, it's really just uh, in terms of best practice, there's not really a best practice. It's just being consistent. So uh, it, it's a tricky one because it is, you know, they're inactive because they haven't, they don't 
have a a transaction assigned to them. So it is um, you're creating your best practice for your library <laughs> in terms of what are you going to be consistently reporting. Um, that is that is my best advice. Unless Jessica wants to add add into that. Uh, yeah, um, I just want to jump in. I'm going through the guide right now, and it is asking um, for active card card holders. But Steph is right. Um, the way that we've seen libraries define active card holders has varied from library to library. Um, and so the, the, again, like Stephanie said, the most important thing is to be consistent because if one year in one year, if you're recording all of your card holders and then the next year only recording those card holders whose cards have had some sort of activity on them for 2023, your numbers are going to be way, way off. So, um, you'll have to think about making sure it's consistent. And if you do decide to change the way that you're reporting card holders, um, I've, I've had to do some of this work with a, a different type of PLSB report that we fill out at the regional level. We just make a note of it, um, you know, in the notes page saying, the reason that this is so much higher, or so much lower is because we're, we're changing the way we count it. Um, so I hope that helps. Okay, will these three numbers always be shown the same way in, by, in the reports in years to come? Um, that's a great question. <laughs> um, you know, um, we make changes to better reflect if we can find a new way of doing things or if PLSB changes the question, um, you know, it could certainly change. So that is a great uh, caveat to, you know, being consistent. Uh, if the question changes, we have to make changes, but if the question doesn't change, um, yes, they'll, they'll still remain these three ways. And the way they're included is because, um, you know, we are part of track and in, in other regions wanted this information broken out this way so that the libraries had options in terms of what they are reporting, because, um, some libraries didn't like that, you know, it wasn't capturing, the non-transactional kind of transactions of a library, you know, especially if you're only using, you know, if I'm only using Libby, you're not going to see that in my, um, in the way that the report, the, the report gathers that, you know, that activity, it's not going to be logged. So, um, are there better ways? If there are, we're going to, we'll make a change and, and explain it. But for now that, uh, yes, it'll be this, it will be consistent this way as far as we can see. Oops. And uh, if I can add something here, again, just because I've had to um, deal with a PLSB report where our numbers that we were counting actually did change as a result of requirements, um, because I was also reporting those statistics to our board, I made sure in the write-up that accompanied these statistics for like two or three years after it happened, um, an explanation about why the numbers were so different. It just sort of, it, it kept it top of mind for me and it answered any questions from, you know, pre-answered any questions from board members about why, um, why the numbers were not consistent from one year to the next. Again, just because the reporting requirements had changed. So keeping really good notes with this kind of thing, especially when your numbers are changing significantly from year to year is really important. Thank you for that, Jessica. Yes, that's good. And if we if we even think back to the previous, um, you know, we had that separation of single cards, family cards, and you had to add them together. So there's even that kind of consideration of in an active card. Well, that might be if it's a family card, that might be three people doing a transaction, but it's only counted once. So it is, um, it's it's a tricky figure. So that's why there's lots of options to to report that. All right, any additional questions? And you're feel, you can feel free to unmute yourself and, and speak to the group. We, we love, we love hearing your voices. Uh, if there is nothing, that is totally fine. Again, we are here for you. Ask YRL at yrl.ab.ca. Um, and uh, 
again, at any point in time, you're more than, and Christine, that's great to hear. I'm glad you're feeling good about it. Uh, it's just something to do. It's, uh, and once you, the feeling of accomplishment after you submitted it, you don't have to do it until next year. <laughs> so feel free to, again, uh, contact us. Even Jessica is available as well. Ask YRL. And um, yeah, thank you again for spending time with us. And it's almost three o'clock. So enjoy the rest of your afternoon. Great seeing everybody, sort of like your names, <laughs> names in boxes. <laughs>